Hello and welcome to a new episode of Agile TD Mondays. Today with Janet Gregory and her topic about the whole team approach and testing. Janet is going to present a keynote at the Agile Testing Days 2017 and will also host the early mornings together with Lisa Crispin. So join us this year for the ninth edition of the Agile Testing Days. And now to you, Janet. Good morning, everyone. How are you this morning? Testing is something that's really near to and dear to my heart, um, along with quality from a, a perspective, from the product perspective, you know, also from the process perspective, because I think they're tied very closely together. Um, and when Lisa Crispin and I uh, did our, wrote our books, that's what we were trying to come from. But today, I want to talk about uh, testing is a team problem. So we want to th really think about uh, how teams work together, about how testing activities work together. And when we put those um, in one place, it actually helps improve our product quality. I've been, um, I started off my testing career uh, working on an agile project or not an agile, a waterfall project. And this is kind of what it felt like from a testing perspective. I felt like I was, you know, swatting bugs all day long, finding them, writing defects, you know, just kind of trying to figure out and the requirements and all of those sorts of documentation. I also felt like this, that everyone on the development team was doing their own thing. They weren't working together. Uh, as a tester, I got all the usual reasons. It's supposed to work like that. It works on my machine. Um, what do you mean I should have tested first? Isn't that your job? That was 17 years ago, and I still feel a helplessness. And in fact, over the last oh, week and a half, I've been doing some other testing, and it wasn't developed in an agile fashion. And I felt it all over again. So it's kind of um, one of those things that it never leaves you. So I want to kind of think about what testing means. I was watching a, um, a, a I wasn't watching, I was kind of looking at things and the other day and a fellow called Dave Westerfield recently responded uh, in a blog post to a, a challenge online. And he talked about what is agile testing. And he quoted Brent Jensen's view that a tester's job is to accelerate the achievement of shippable product. And I kind of like that. I say it in a different way, but it really means the same sort of thing. To me, I think good testing you know, provides information. It's more than testing software. It's about learning. I like his definition, but I would change it from a tester's job um, to testing activities that happen, right? Testing shouldn't be a bottleneck, but it really should help the team deliver a quality product with less uh, friction within the team. Um, also, testing is more than testing software. It's testing a product. It's testing product integration. It's much more than testing software these days. Uh, on my very first Agile team, I really discovered something amazing, uh, at least to me it was, because I found that testing was fun. I could actually talk and get along with the programmers, and it did feel like magic and unicorns. Um, I was lucky enough to feel that several more times, and I think that today I'm not seeing that as much, and I'm not sure why. Um, Last week, a fellow called Carlos Simone, Simone, I'm sorry I pronounced that name wrong, I can tell, um, pasted this excerpt from Lisa's in my first book. He didn't make any comments, he just posted it. Uh, that book was published in 2009, so eight years ago. Uh, it, what it's really saying is that a lot of people are taking their waterfall projects and just squishing it into a smaller 
uh, instead of a six month or one year, they're doing it down into a two or four week iteration. So it's a mini waterfall. And I think that that is a lot of the reason that people aren't feeling the magic. I still see a lot of organizations where this holds true, right? I think as long as teams think and act like testing is a phase at the end, the mini waterfall is inevitable. Agile testing, and this is a slide that I use in almost every single presentation I do, is as Elizabeth Hendrickson says, it's not an activity. I mean, it is an activity. It is not a phase, right? And I think this kind of goes with that definition I shared a little bit earlier um, about accelerating the achievement, right? Agile development is supposed to look like this, where it's not a phase, it works hand in hand together, the teams working together, right? We have everyone engaged, but I think there's still some confusion about what that really means. Uh, it means that testers, product owners, uh, business analysts, um, designers, everyone who's on the team works together to deliver that quality product. It doesn't mean a handover from one role to another. A fully cross-functional team works together and I think that's when we start to feel the magic. Sometimes we have to step outside of our team boundaries to look to our extended family, right? That might be those uh, UX designers or database administrators or somebody else, but really think about how we can work together, right? So there are lines, but they're not hard and fast lines. Can everything, like people won't go, well, I can't do everything. But when we start to share knowledge, when we start to share um, our strengths. So programmers think about testability, or at least I'm hoping they think about testability, right? Testers think about the cu customer perspective. They think about the big picture. So when we're working together, we have different skill sets. How can we mesh them? Um, a lot like the zebras and, and wildebeests and gazelles on this picture, they work together to look for predators, for how they get their food, but how can we do that as a team, right? Um, everybody's heard of the T-shaped skills, I'm hoping. If not, go look it up. But thinking about our teams, um, and Robert Lambert and Adam Knight have talked about this a little bit, uh, how can we look at what is our strengths, what is our breadth of skills, how can it change as we go forward, right? Where's our depth? How can we take that depth, our strengths, and apply it to some of the practices that we do uh, in Agile? Because I think that's where it becomes a very important thing, right? Acceptance test driven development is a really good practice. You might be calling it behavioral driven development or specification by example. They're all um, based on the same premise, which is guiding development with examples. You start with your feature. Um, if you were doing Scrum, you might start, call it an epic, but you slice it into stories. Right at the very beginning, you're talking about examples of the feature. What do we mean by that? Uh, as you get your story, you apply your, um, you have conversations, you think about what your high level acceptance tests are. Those tests will define the scope of the story. Uh, and you want to be thinking about how do we get that shared understanding? This is about the conversation. The, the tests that come out of the conversation should help us get that shared understanding, right? Uh, if you have testers on your team, they're going to be involved all the way through asking questions to uncover those hidden assumptions, right? They're going to um, use their critical thinking skills to, to think about those questions. But early in the process like this, we are testing ideas. We're going to, um, as we go through and we start to uh, code, 
right? We are going to try to automate, hopefully. Uh, and that's where testers and programmers work really closely together. Because what we want to do when we're automating is check to make sure the system behaves as expected. Once we have the automation in the code and we know it's doing what it's supposed to do, then we can explore. We really can test the system to see what we didn't think about. These are all testing activities that uh, could be done by testers, but they also can be done by anybody else on the team. They can help about it. Uh, Lisa Crispin just wrote a really good article on the power of pairing with a programmer doing exploratory testing. Once that's all done and hopefully all the defects are fixed, um, we accept the story. But this can only happen if we are working very closely together. Um, the benefits of doing it this way, thinking about how we test before we code, really gives us that understanding. It also helps with a common language, which brings that team together again. We get that shared definition of done, and we're really trying to um, prevent defects in the code. That's what we're trying to do. So uh, a lot of times we talk about the three amigos, or the phrase I use is the power of three, or four, depending on, on what you're trying to do. Together, it's about the team. So even doing things like automation, taking a model like the uh, automation pyramid, talk as a team, discuss. What are we going to test at the feature level? How are we going to automate that through the user interface end to end? What are we going to automate at the story level, at the API level, right? the service layer under the UI? What are we going to automate at the unit tests? When we start to have that conversation as a team, that's when we will get it together. That's when we will start truly thinking about how we work together as a team. Those are the important things. Things like exploratory testing, working. Uh, I like to take and, and work with the programmers and say, hey, what do you think is the highest risk area? Working with the product owners and saying, what personas should we be exploring as in this story, in this feature? Who are the most important people? And as a team, you have a much better insight into these things than you do as if you're one person taking all those testing activities to yourself. Get input, share your strengths, right? Use models like the uh, quadrants, just to talk about um, or to show that when you look at this that all the different types of tests that you might do these are just examples aren't necessarily tester oriented right um, programmers do a lot of testing um, the uh, business people can help with exploratory testing they definitely do user acceptance testing you want to be thinking about uh, even the quadrant four tests at the very beginning when you're doing exploring examples. Uh, what security do we need? What performance do we need? But need to test about, to talk about it as a team. It comes back to this mindset switch. Um, and this slide I use a lot too. This comes back, that first definition that I used, right? What can I do if I'm a tester to help deliver the quality product successfully. That's what I need to do. How can I do that? And it's by working with the team. From a programming perspective, if I ask myself, what can I do to help create testable code to deliver that quality product successfully? Thinking about testability, perhaps asking testers for tests first. Even for the product managers, product owners, they have a big part in the testing as well, right? How can I work with the team to deliver that, right? It's by helping with the acceptance tests, giving, having clear ownership, finding out how to um, think clearly, clarify those, those questions. It comes back down to that 
testers aren't responsible for quality, right? The whole team is. That the whole team can understand the programmers to help get the programmers to understand what to code so that there's fewer defects, right? We really want to get that understanding that testing is only a part of it. We cannot test quality in. We have to build it in. And that comes back from testing early, making sure we understand, understanding that it's an activity, not a phase at the end, um, and that it's the whole team that needs to solve the testing problems, not only the tester. And that everybody, individually, from a very personal level, says, I know how I contribute to quality. I believe that then, and only then, will we be able to deliver a quality product to our customer. How do you contribute to that quality? And understanding that, I think, is a very important thing. Um, so I think I was supposed to talk for 18 minutes. I think that's about 20 minutes. Um, so I believe we have time for questions now. Is that true? Experience uh, teams which are remote. Ah. And, and how can this approach be applied to them? So I think that um, the sweet spot for Agile is small co-located teams, no questions. I think that if you have um, an offshore team or a distributed team, you have to work a lot harder to try to figure out how to work together. So distributed team, there's lots of different tools out there, ones we're using right now, right? If we did, um, we're using Google Hangouts, so we can share, we can talk, I can see you, I can see your reaction. So if the time zones aren't a huge difference, you and I are now eight hours apart, um, we can still have conversations through the day. If we're 12 hours apart, it's a lot harder. If you're two hours apart, there should be no reason why we couldn't do this all day long, right? Um, I think that the time zones are probably the biggest issue. It's not that you're distributed because we have the tools to do work with that now. Um, it's the time zones. So when you do something and you work with a team that's 12 hours away, you no longer are being able to ask questions in real time. You are doing emails. and and. I mentioned earlier, I've been doing some testing lately, and uh, one of our uh, people on our team is seven or eight hours away. And so we're doing a lot of overnight things, and it feels like we're waiting for answers um, for a whole day, and then by the time we do something, it's going back again, and it, it makes it very, very difficult. It stretches everything out twice as long as it needs to be. Right, So we work really hard trying to take advantage of the sun, right? So that at the end of my day, I'll have emails out there so that uh, he can answer them first thing in the morning, but it doesn't always work, right? Um, and so it's very difficult, but you have to make the extra effort. Are there any preconditions if you know you're working in a distributed team that you have a, a catalog of questions you want to ask firsthand so that you know the <laughs> yeah. or something? Yeah, there's, there's um, some tips and tricks you can use. So Lisa and I, uh, in our blog, we just wrote a blog post a couple of weeks ago. And one of the things we did um, on our agile tester.ca uh, website, so people can download it, is we did a little checklist. We, it's to take it into your iteration planning meetings or into your pre-planning meetings, your story readiness meetings to say, hey, here's some ideas. These are the things I need to think about, right? Um, and so you want to take that, a checklist, something like that to say, what do I need to think about? Security is one of the most important things. So I better make sure that I ask my security questions early. Having that kind of a checklist um, really, really helps to remember things, right? Um, I think, so that quadrant four in the quadrants um, is about uh, critiquing the product from a, a technology point of view, which includes all of those 
attributes, the quality attributes like security. Uh, if teams start to say and ask themselves, what is the most important thing that our product has to do? It has to act under load correctly. It has to be really secure. You're going to concentrate on those things, right? Um, and, and so it comes back to that team again, understanding together. And now, thank you very much, Janet. It was a pleasure having you. And we will, you took your time. We'll see you in six weeks. Yes. Which is in six coming weeks. up fast. <laughs> yes, that's true. And I'm looking forward to meeting you again. Yes. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.